hello dear students let us uh, continue our discussion on this uh, spanning set and basis of euclidean space right so yesterday we had uh, seen what is a linear span let me just uh, recall uh, in the last lecture actually we have seen this linear span okay so if you have a set s equal to say u1 u2 up to u r uh, which is a subset of e to the power n okay euclidean n dimensional space then the linear span linear span of s is the set of all set of all linear combinations linear combinations of the vectors in s okay so we denote it this way linear span of s it is the set of all lambda 1 u1 plus lambda 2 u2 plus up to lambda n u uh, sorry lambda r u r says that this lambda i belongs to r for all i equal to 1 2 up to r okay so it is the collection of all possible linear combination this lambda 1 lambda 2 up to lambda r they vary over all real numbers okay so in particular say uh, u1 plus u2 this is an element in ls okay any element in ls will be of this type some scalar into u1 plus some other scalar into u2 okay like that so it may happen that many of the scalars are zero so for example this u1 plus u2 here the other scalars are zero okay same similarly u3 this is also an element in ls okay because i can write u3 as 0 into u1 plus 0 into u2 okay plus 1 into u3 okay plus dot 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 up to uh, 0 into u r okay everything else is 0 only this is 1 okay so in particular you note that the 0 vector the 0 vector vector 0 is always an element inside ls whatever be the set s 0 is always inside ls as 0 uh, can be written as this this is the 0 vector it can be written as 0 multiplied with u1 plus 0 into u2 plus dot 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 up to 0 ur okay so the 0 element uh, means the linear span always contains at least the 0 element okay right so that is what we called linear span of uh, this set okay so uh, yeah now uh, if if it happens that linear span of s is equal to e to the power n exactly equal to the n dimensional euclidean space the whole space okay then we say that s is or s is called a spanning set of spanning set of e to the power n okay or uh, or we say that or uh, s spans spans e to the power n okay s is said to span e to the power x n that means any element of e to the power n can be written as a linear combination of elements of s okay the meaning of this is any element or any vector any vector in e to the power n can be written as written as a linear combination linear combination of the vectors vectors in s okay this is the meaning if e to the power n is exactly equal to this okay then we say that uh, the set s spans e to the power n okay so for example one example i had already uh, given you if we have s equal to 
this 1 0 0 1 this is a subset of e to the power 2 okay then ls is exactly equal to e to the power 2 okay so i had already shown you this ls is al already a subset of e squared this is by definition itself because any linear combination of elements of s is always an element in e2 only by property of e2 as a vector space okay we have already seen so this by definition this one part is obvious the other part is let uh, x y belongs to e squared then we can write x y as so our intention is to show that this x y can be written as a linear combination of the elements of s okay so let us see whether we can write it or not see x y can be written as x 0 plus 0 y hmm, it's obvious so uh, this is x into 1 0 plus y into 0 1 okay so this this type of element is actually an element in ls okay so what i have shown uh, if i start with an arbitrary element of e square i can show that that element is actually an element of ls okay so therefore actually i have shown that e square this is actually a subset of ls right so from this one and two from this two we have e square this is equal to ls right so this is a spanning set okay this is a spanning set for e square okay. a spanning set for e square right okay now we say what is called basis okay basis of e to the power and okay uh, let a, uh, a set s subset of oh, sorry a set s subset of e to the power n is said to be a basis said to be a basis of e to the power n if number one if s is linearly independent okay means the vectors in s they are linearly independent linearly independent and then and uh, this s spans e to the power n and ls equal to e to the power n okay if these two conditions are satisfied then we say that s is a basis of e to the power n okay for example the set that we have shown 1 0 0 1 this is a linearly independent set in last lecture also i have discussed this is a subset of e square is linearly independent and uh, ls is exactly equal to e square okay so this s is a is a basis basis for e square okay this is a basis right so this uh, this is the the vectors here are linearly independent and uh, the linear span of s is e square okay if these two conditions are satisfied we say that it's a basis okay right so there are some results associated with basis uh, which we will just state because it's not a quotes on linear algebra it's a quotes on linear programming we just need the results we don't need to prove it so in the linear algebra course uh, the past students you have already done that in the linear algebra or, done, or at least you have got that in the syllabus uh, of linear algebra uh, and uh, for the honor student you will be studying it this semester okay so there are a few results any two basis so here uh, in lpp whatever uh, spaces we are considering they are just finite dimensional space okay so there is something called finite dimensional space so in a finite dimensional space what happens the number of elements in a basis is a, is finite okay so whatever spaces here we are considering they are actually n dimensional spaces so uh, here everything will be number number of basis elements will be finite okay so uh, any two this is uh, you can take it as a results some results okay any two basis so in plural we say basis of e to the power n 
have the same number of elements the same number of elements a okay, number of of elements okay that is what is that number of element that is n okay exactly n if it is a basis of e square it will ha have exactly two elements okay see here there are two elements two vectors 1 0 0 1 okay it cannot have more than two it cannot have less than two okay so these are actually proved in linear algebra so we are just using that result okay so let us not go deep into it because we have other things to do here in LPP. So any two bases of e to the power n have the same number of elements that is n only. So e cube, e cube has has basis consisting of three elements only, consisting of only three vectors. Okay, three vectors. Right. So, can you guess one basis of this e cube? It's very similar to this earlier one. 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and 0 0 1. Okay. This is a very, uh, so th this type of basis is called a standard basis. Standard basis means it's very easy to verify that uh, it's a basis. Okay. Because this, this vectors are linearly independent and you can always see that any element in e cube can be written as x into 1 0 0 right plus uh, y into 0 1 0 plus z into 0 0 1 okay so um, any element of e cube is actually a linear combination of these elements okay so s is a basis of e cube okay in in general uh, in in general uh, we have s equal to say for the n dimensional space one zero 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 okay so there are n elements here n coordinates okay, coordinates right this then zero one the position of one just changes okay then zero zero like that one zero zero okay in that way continues the last one is zero zero up to zero one okay nth one is zero so this is a subset of e to the power n is a basis is a basis of e to the power n only. okay this is a basis of e to the power n right so here uh, so we do usually denote this as uh, say e1 e2 up to e n okay where this e j is uh the n tuple the n tuple with one at the jth place okay at the jth place and zero uh, and zero elsewhere elsewhere okay so e1 is the vector with one at the first place okay e2 is the vector with the one at the second place okay e3 is the vector with one at the third place okay and zero elsewhere en is the vector with one at the nth place and zero everywhere else okay so in symbols we denote it this way so this is actually called standard basis of standard standard basis of e to the power n okay right so let us see some other examples of basis uh, say let me show that show that this set s equal to uh, let me write it something like 1 2 and here let me write 0 3 okay this is a basis of is a basis of e square right let me just show that so to show this let us uh, start with uh, showing that this set is linearly independent first okay so suppose that x comma y belongs to r such that x into 1 2 plus y into 0 3 this is equal to 0 0 okay 0 element 
or the zero vector here is zero zero because we are uh, talking about this e2 okay or e square so uh, what is this if we just simplify it's x comma twice x plus zero comma three y okay and this is equal to zero zero so from there i can just add them so it's x plus uh, x comma twice x plus three y equal to zero zero okay so from this if we compare the corresponding terms x is zero and twice x plus three y is equal to zero so this implies x is zero and here if we put a value, value of x because these two have to be satisfied simultaneously so if we put the value of x zero here then we also get y equal to zero so s is the given set s is linearly independent okay so the first thing is satisfied next i have to show that um, any element of e square can be written as a linear combination of these two elements okay so we already have uh, we have ls linear span of s is always a subset of e square okay this is by definition itself now let let um, say we start with an x y inside e square then uh, x y can be written so we have to see whether we can write it write x y as a linear combination of uh, the elements of uh, this okay so let let me take a b instead of x y okay. let a b belongs to r square then uh, or uh, if x comma y belongs to r such that such that a b is equal to x into 1 2 plus y into 0 3 hmm, then a b is actually equal to uh, x comma twice x plus 3y okay. no if a b uh, in e square can be written like this then a b has to be this means our intention is to find whether it is uh, possible to get such x and y okay if it is possible then any element here can be written in that form okay means uh, as a linear combination of 1 2 and 0 3 okay so that is a, a equal to x and b equal to twice x plus 3y so we have already uh, got the value of x and so y is equal to what x is equal to a so y equal to b minus twice a divided by 3 okay so both of these are well defined real numbers because a is a real number b b is a real number right since a comma b they belong to r so uh, this x comma y they uh, they are also inside r okay right so the, the expressions that we have got here are valid okay this uh, the expressions for so the expressions expressions for x comma y uh, are valid okay valid let us write it this way since a b belongs to r so the expression for x y are valid okay so that means thus this any element a b inside uh, e2 can be written as this a into 1 2 plus what is x uh, y y is b minus twice a by 3 into 0 comma 3 okay so if you compute you see a into 1 2 this is a comma twice a and this will be a 0 comma b minus twice a okay so if we add them we will get a b right so and thus e square is also a subset of LS. So, so this is an element in ls so e square is a subset of ls so therefore ultimately we have shown that ls is equal to e square we have already shown s is linearly independent now we have shown ls equal to e square thus s is a s is a basis basis of e square okay 
So this is one example of basis. So uh, if we know two elements of E square, who are who are linearly independent, we can actually get all other elements of E square as a linear combination of those two elements. Okay. So that is why these are called basis. Hmm. So uh, one more result you try to remember this any set of more than n vectors okay, n vectors in e to the power n is linearly dependent okay if you have more than n vectors if you take more than n vectors in e to the power n then that set is always going to be linearly dependent it can never be linearly independent okay so the number of or the maximum number of maximum number of linearly uh, of linearly of, of vectors in a linearly independent set of e to the power n is n only okay there cannot be more than n vectors which are linearly independent okay any set of more than n vectors is always linearly dependent okay it cannot be independent right this is an important result say uh, for example uh, so so achha, let us consider this matrix consider so now we are coming to the point where which is more important for us 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay and uh, okay uh, okay first let me start with this yeah so it's a uh, two row three column okay two row three column matrix right so uh, if you see the columns the columns the columns this one two four five seven eight okay so these are elements in what these are elements in last lecture i told you the columns of a matrix or columns of an m by n matrix are actually or can be considered as vectors in e to the power m okay columns of m by n matrix are vectors in e to the power m okay and the uh, the rows of uh, m by n matrix are are vectors in e to the power n okay so the columns here they belong to e square so but e square is of dimension what dimension 2 so these columns so they are so there are three columns here so they are linearly dependent okay these three columns cannot be linearly independent right so the maximum number of linearly independent columns in this matrix is actually 2 okay it may happen that the, the two, 2 means uh, two columns are also linearly dependent okay but we are talking about maximum maximum two columns can be linearly independent okay because um, uh, any set of more than two vectors in e square will be always linearly dependent okay right so for this matrix so for this matrix say 1 2 4 5 and 7 8 right so for a equal to this the maximum maximum number of linearly independent columns columns is 2 okay similarly the maximum number of linearly independent rows is actually 3 okay but here uh, the number of rows is less than 3 so here it will be a 2 only okay any set of uh, so each row is an element in each row belongs to uh, this e cube okay and any set of more than three vectors in e cube is linearly dependent but i cannot say anything about any set of uh, less than three vectors okay so that is not possible so here the maximum number of linearly independent rows uh, can be two okay so here maximum number of number of 
linearly independent rows is actually equal to 2 okay because uh, this is the maximum number of rows or that is possible okay actually in e cube the maximum number of uh, linearly independent vectors that can remain at a one place is 3 okay so here there are actually only two columns only out of two rows only so we can uh, say the maximum number of linearly independent rows for this particular matrix is two okay not more than that okay one more result you try to remember one more result is if determinant uh, if a is in a is in n by n matrix okay, matrix and determinant of a is non zero okay then a has exactly exactly n linearly independent rows and n linearly independent columns okay so if the determinant of a matrix is non zero okay that means if the matrix is non singular then the number of linearly independent rows or columns is exactly n itself okay right so if we are able to find out uh, this a determinant okay which is non zero then the corresponding rows of that uh, the matrix the the rows or columns of those that particular matrix are linearly independent actually okay so say for example this one say a equal to 1 2 uh, 3 4 okay and say i write something like uh, 3 okay 6 8 right so here you see uh, this is a this is not a square matrix so i cannot talk about the determinant here uh, what is the maximum number of linearly independent columns maximum number of linearly independent columns columns here is equal to what maximum number of linearly independent columns is 2 okay because each of these columns is a vector in e square when you square more than more than two vectors are always linearly dependent so maximum number of linearly independent columns is two only right so uh, here uh, we have uh, so if we choose a sub matrix okay square sub matrix say i i choose this one the sub matrix formed by so this is this is what this is sub matrix sub matrix formed by first column first and second columns okay first and second columns uh, first and second rows and columns okay rows and columns so we are taking first row second row together with first uh, first column uh, first row second row together with first column second column okay so this is a sub matrix formed with first row uh, first row second row and first column second column okay so what is the determinant of this sub matrix determinant of this 1 3 2 4 what is this this is equal to 4 minus 6 so there is minus 2 which is non zero okay so what i can conclude these two vectors are linearly or these two columns are linearly independent okay so therefore 1 2 sorry 1 2 and 3 4 are linearly independent okay these two columns are linearly independent next let us consider uh, this one a equal to so then the same matrix i'm talking about one two three four six eight okay let me consider this sub matrix now okay so sub matrix formed by by second third rows and columns okay rows and columns right so what is the determinant 3 4 6 8 okay so what is this if you multiply 3 into 2 8 is 24 
minus this is 6 into 4 is 24 24 minus 24 is 0 okay so here these two columns are not linearly independent so therefore this 3 4 6 8 are, are linearly dependent okay so you can uh, see nicely also the third column is actually the uh, that is called uh, the scalar multiple of the second column okay what about this uh, the determinant for uh, square sub matrix formed with first column and second column first co first column and second uh, sorry first column and third column together with first row second row so 1 2 6 uh, 1 6 2 8 so that is 8 minus 6 to the 12 that is minus 4 so this is also non zero so this th these two columns c1 and c3 they are also linearly independent okay so how many linearly independent columns uh, we can choose okay or uh, how many uh, sub matrices 2 by 2 sub matrices we can choose which are linearly independent so from here we see that uh, we can choose this first column second column okay another one is first column third column okay so these are the linearly independent um, this so out of three columns we can choose so we have got that uh, the pair okay the pair consisting of c1 and c2 this is linearly independent another pair consisting of c1 and c3 this is also linearly independent okay right so that way we can uh, proceed say a number uh, another exercise say a equal to 1 2 3 0 1 0 uh, 1 3 3 and uh, say 0 2 3 okay so here uh, you see each column is a vector in e cube okay each column is a vector in e cube so here there are four columns but uh, so the four columns are actually linearly dependent because in e cube any set of uh, more than three vectors is linearly dependent okay so if i want to choose linearly independent columns from here then i have to choose three columns okay right uh, i have to uh, means i have to come down to three columns so first let us try whether can whether there are three columns which are linearly dependent uh, independent or not okay so let us see this particular uh, one sub matrix okay so the sub matrix formed with c1 c2 c3 okay this sub matrix this is actually a determinant of this determinant of this is 1 2 3 0 1 0 and then 1 3 3 okay so if you cal calculate this determinant you expand by the second uh, column so it's actually plus mi uh, plus minus plus okay so you know the expansion this is 1 into 1 into if i uh, uh, remove this so it's 1 1 3 3 okay so this comes out to be 3 minus 3 that is 0 okay so determinants all of you i i hope you know from your knowledge of higher secondary classes uh, if you do not know or if you are not finding this particular topic or this calculation comfortable please open a higher secondary book on matrices and determinants and just have a look how determinant is computed okay so this determinant comes out to be zero so here uh, c1 c2 c3 this set is linearly dependent okay it's not independent okay now let us say uh, take c1 c2 uh, and c4 okay and then let us see what happens right so just let me uh, make a copy of this yeah. so uh, now i am considering c1 c2 and c4 okay. let's see whether it's linearly independent or not so determinant of the sub matrix formed with c1 c2 c4 okay this sub matrix so for determinant always we need a square matrix okay so we, we have to take this square matrix 0 1 0 and then 0 2 3 again you expand by the this second column so it's 1 into 
uh, these things will get cancelled. So it's one into uh, three minus th one into three minus uh, zero into three. Okay, so this is equal to three, which is non-zero. So therefore, this uh, these vectors c1, c2, c4, they are linearly independent. Okay, so whenever we get the matrix square matrix formed with these columns is non-singular we can immediately conclude that these are linearly independent okay so c1 c2 c4 they are linearly independent okay so how many combination of columns we have to check this is a this is also a higher secondary problem there are four column total there are four columns okay and i have to check uh, three at a time so number of uh, combinations that i have to check is 4 c3 so it's factorial 4 divided by factorial 4 minus 3 into factorial 3 so that's actually 4 right 4 c3 is 4 so i have to check for check four combinations of columns uh, to, to see whether um, their determinant is 0 or non-zero okay so c1 c2 c4 we have already checked next we will check c1 c3 c4 okay next we will check c1 c3 c4 so let me make another copy of this C1, C3, C4. Okay, so this class is going a bit lengthy. Okay, even so, determinant of C1, C3, C4. Okay, so this determinant is actually 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 3, 0, 2, 3. Okay, expand by the first row. It's 1 into 1 multiplied with 6, uh, 9 minus 6, minus 1 multiplied with 6 minus 6 okay so that's 0 9 minus 6 is 3 which is also non zero so th so therefore this c1 c3 c4 this is a linearly independent set okay these three columns are also linearly independent okay next uh, i have to check another one that is uh, c c2 c3 c4 okay that is the last one three uh, three combinations already we have checked the last combination we have to check okay so uh, what is that determinant of c2 c3 c4 okay this sub matrix so this will be 0 1 0 1 3 3 0 2 3 okay so this is equal to minus 1 into because if i expand by the first column so here i have to write minus 1 minus 1 to the power i plus j okay please have a revision of determinants so 3 minus 0 so this is equal to minus 3 which is non zero so here this these columns c2 c3 c4 they are also linearly independent okay these are linearly independent okay so you have got it so how to how to check whether these columns are linearly independent or not okay right okay So uh, these things will be required in a topic which is called uh, finding out basic solution. Okay, finding out basic solution. So there are certain problems which we need to do. Basic solution of a system, linear system of equations. Linear system of equations. Okay, so we will cover that in the next lecture. For that these backgrounds are very much important how to find out this uh, that is called uh, linearly independent columns okay of the matrices and all right so that is what we will be discussing basic solution of linear system of equation in the next lecture thank you